Welcome back to the Papa Meat channel. How you doing? How you doing? Come on in and sit on down. I am talking to you today about Velma. If you've been living under a rock, or if you haven't been on Twitter, God bless your soul, then you might have missed the tsunami, the absolute tidal wave that has been the first reception of the new Scooby-Doo spinoff show, Velma. I don't know why I decided to wait till basically three in the morning. It's four o'clock now, and I watched the first two episodes, but I don't know why I waited till this time to watch it, but you know, I was just thinking to myself, is it as bad as people say? Is this show as bad as the public wants you to believe? 1.6 right now. The rating system out of 10. That's a pretty, that's a big stinky. That's a full diaper. That's a big stinker. So I decided, you know what? Why not now? I'm staying up anyway. So I thought I would just give my quick thoughts and ask the question Is Velma as bad as they say? And in today's overcrowded market in pop culture, on TV shows, every teen show ever, in teen movies, minorities on TV, television actors, so help me, Shonda Rhimes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's it, it, it's hard to not get caught up in the whirlwind of hate when our show comes out. You know, you have things like Callisto Protocol. <laughs> Where it's like I have I have I've bought that game, but since it was released, I haven't even touched it because I lost interest in the show because of how bad the reception was of it, right? Same thing with like you remember that show Thundercats Roar? Everybody was pissed off because it was in Cal Art style. That's another thing. I've never checked it out. I probably wouldn't have checked it out anyways, but still it's just another thing where it's like you hear it's hated, so it's it's dead. It's dead in the water. But I wanted to take time to be like, you know what? This is kind of an interesting idea. I, you know, I like Scooby-Doo. Who doesn't like fucking Scooby-Doo? Are you kidding me? Come on. And it's like HBO, it's supposed to be for an older audience. We're attacking more more serious things and we got rid of this talking dog this is like a true crime person's wet dream velma's thick uh -huh. pussy walking around with daphne's thick uh -huh. pussy and thread's big old <laughs> not even shaggy this new guy named donnie or Nor norville so i thought i'd give it a try and it's my god like first off i guess i just want to say the positives very quickly because it's kind of a shorter list uh the visuals the show is animated beautifully i think the style of the show is very fun it has like a very uh oddly enough it kind of reminds me of a harry partridge cartoon because like harry partridge it kind of gives me like similar human designs to that beautiful animation with horror sequences and stuff and just visually it's very nice all the artists that worked on it should be very proud because they did a lot with i mean just very simple uh scooby-doo setup just wanted to take time and say artist i see you out there i appreciate you you guys rule i'm sorry that the next part is pretty much bad it's all bad after this <laughs> which leads into basically the writing and the thing about this show is that we follow velma right it's the name of the show you know we're not going to follow fucking norville <laughs> we're not going to get people asses in seats over norville should just call the show not shaggy what um that was terrible. I'm very tired. Uh, <laughs> basically, the biggest conflict and the biggest like draw to the show, I would say, is that Velma, who historically has loved to solve mysteries in this show, she still loves solving mysteries, except it plagues her. You know, she her mother started giving her mysteries when she was a kid. That's how they bonded. But her mother is gone now, and it's the biggest mystery of all because Velma's solved the mystery of where her christmas presents were and then her mommy left and never came back so she has like a christmas gift that her mom left in the car and it reads a lot like that scene in eight crazy nights that adam sandler animated movie where adam sandler's character feels horrible about his parents death and he never opens up a christmas card from them and i thought that was weird i was like this is like some eight crazy nights shit i don't know because of her mother's disappearance every time she wants to solve a mystery she has a heart like failing panic attack and she hallucinates all this horror stuff and it's done very well like i think that's like the funnest part of the show and in the first episode you get a little bit of it and then the second episode i think it happens like one or two times and i was like why don't we do more of that that's fun but that's the biggest conflict is you know she has all these mysteries that she has to solve but they might kill her that's a fun conflict i like that as a setup you could run with that and make some very interesting you know choices in a series why not but the show is so suffocated by its poor joke telling it's almost as if they did their absolute hardest to make velma the most unlikable character that I've seen in a long time. I would say to me, and I hate to put this out there, but this show feels like it's on par with Hoops. Oh my God. If you haven't seen a Hoops and you want to feel like, if you want to experience what Snow Side is like, watch Hoops. <laughs> If you want to know what it's like to really like have a near-death experience, try sitting through the first season of Hoops. That's about as close as you'll get to meeting death himself. 
he's right at your door. They're doing this thing where it's a lot of meta humor and it feels like just the industry standard right now, no matter what, especially a lot of people who aren't in animation will copy what's just the most popular thing, which is right Rick and Morty right now. So Rick and Morty was very much meta humor, but it kind of served a purpose where it was like, oh, Rick's a huge narcissist. He's like talking down to the characters in the show and he's talking down to the audience. It make it, it does make sense. As much as you want to like slam your fucking desk and be like, Rick and Morty, it has purpose. You know, you can bitch about the formula you want, but it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's good stuff. They're copying, they're trying, it feels like they're trying to do like a Rick and Morty thing where everybody just feels very pretentious and very like, you like that? Well, you're so, well, that, what are you, an idiot? Ah! You're such a stupid idiot for liking that. Also, I'm gonna, Steve Harvey, and they throw in pop culture references. So like, oh, white people are, so, uh, Fred's gonna do this because he's a white rich guy, just like, and you're like, you just feel like you just got blindsided. And it's weird because I see a lot of people online saying it's like, oh, this is woke comedy at its worst. But the weird thing is, I don't even think that the show's trying to be woke. I just think it's really, really bad writing. It's bad writing because I feel like they're trying to say a message or maybe they're attempting to be woke, but they're not really saying anything of value. There's rehashing things that we've heard in like the 2015 presidential election type stuff. I mean, there's a hashtag joke. What? I'm also hashtag the owner of Spooners. In 2023, there's a ha What? Did a 73-year-old woman write this? Which, if that was the case, that'd be hilarious. Because then it's like, oh, it's funny because all the jokes are untimely. And that would be very interesting, but it's not. It's from people... It's from Mindy... What's her name? It's not Mindy Lewis. Kisling or like Keeling or something like that. Mindy, whatever. Put their fucking name up on the screen. I don't give a it's shit. It's Kelly from The Office. She was a big writer on that show. That's like one of the most, that's probably like the most successful show of all time. And it just feels so odd that it's like, did you learn nothing from that show? Like it just feels so oddly tone deaf and like weird and not funny. And the weird thing too is like, you know, comedy is subjective. You can sit there and have the strongest opinion about something, but at the end of the day, your opinion doesn't matter. You're just a regular fucking person just like everybody else watching something. So if you like something, right on, cool. If you don't like something, whatever. You can bitch online, do whatever you want. But with this stuff, it was just like, it was like I was at like a nine-year-old stand-up comedy special. Like if a bunch of nine-year-olds came up and they were decided to do stand-up comedy. It was just kind of like very basic stuff like that. It was just, it's odd. Like uh, Norville, who's shaggy in this, he doesn't do drugs and they make a point to have him say, it has something to do with drugs, which I hate. Isn't that h hilarious that he doesn't like drugs? Isn't, Isn't that, that so, so funny? funny? And then also he talks about weed humor. You know, I've never been into weed humor, but if I was, whatever. And then Velma is just like, oh, well the only people who like that are- Adults who still watch cartoons. <laughs> Which it's like, you're a cartoon and you want people to watch it? So are you like, are you shitting on people who are watching your show? Like, it's like a bully in school who is like, I don't know, uh, by their parent. I can't probably say that. It's like a bully in school who's just like, what are you, a fucking loser? Dude, I'm just joking. <laughs> you know what I mean? He pushes you in a locker, he like breaks your back and throws you in the locker. He's like, dude, I'm just joking around. That's how the show feels. It's just like Velma's just constantly shitting on everybody and like learning nothing along the way. It was very obvious that they're trying, like I said, they're trying to do like a Rick Sanchez thing. But even in Rick and Morty, Rick is the biggest douche ever. He's an asshole, he's selfish fish, whatever. But even if they don't show in the episodes, there are key moments in the show where you see Rick and he's like miserable. He's not a happy person. No one is like, I want to be Rick. And if you are saying that you're nine and you don't understand the <laughs> emotional complexities of like narcissism and depression and all these kind of things that, you know, Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland have propped up in the show. And it's like the same reason why it's just like a little list. It's like Larry David and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Nobody is watching Curb Your Enthusiasm and being like, you know, this list Larry guy's got his head on straight. He's insufferable. He's annoying. The biggest one that I feel is comparable is Kenny Powers, Eastbound and Down. Kenny Powers is a lot like Velma. He's abrasive. He thinks everybody else is stupid. He only looks out after himself. But there's moments in the show that cause Danny to be human. He gets humiliated. You feel sympathetic for him because you can tell that he's like, you know, he's just a guy who's trying to find acceptance and respect from all these people. There's these just little human moments with other characters in the show that so far, and I know we're only on epi two episodes in, but it's like, you haven't had one little nugget of like, oh, maybe I need to change as a person. 
right? And there's a moment in the second episode where we find out Fred hasn't hit puberty or something and his dad's like, oh, if people find out, you'll make fun of you. And it's like, who cares? I don't know, dude. Like, hey, sorry, I can't control how fucking fast my balls and hair come in. You know, like, I don't know. It's just weird. But it's like, obviously, like a very shaky issue. And then she kind of just like spoils it for everybody. And she like insults him so much in the court. But it, it's prefaced in a way where she was like, unfortunately, I was wrong about Fred. And it's like, oh, this is a character moment where she's going to admit that she judges people too much. And she just kind of states all the facts that Fred says and insults him so much that Fred puts himself in a position to where he like looks like a maniac that's going to kill somebody. And then he goes to prison. And that's, and that's how the episode ends. And you're just kind of like, what? Huh? Why? It's just, it's odd. Uh, another thing that's kind of a glaring issue as well is the voice acting in the show. Uh, Glenn Howardin, who's Dennis Reynolds, is like an amazing actor, but I f it's like they chose so many bad takes from him. And I think they like put a little high pass filter on his voice. So it sounds really weird on Fred, but there's just some spots where it just sounds very emotionless. But I would say Mindy is the worst. Like Velma just- Oh God, my heart! It's so one note and she doesn't it's like she's incapable of going over this register so there's like no real emotional resonance when she's yelling and she's being like i'm not the killer it'd be like i'm not the killer imagine that you're being framed for murder and you're my response would be like murder i didn't i didn't fucking murder anybody i, I didn't murder anybody and then velma it's kind of like what i didn't murder anybody don't put my dog down! Yeah, he bites people, but please, please, he's my best friend! Don't put my dog down. Please, he's my best friend. I don't know. It's just my opinion, <laughs> but I'd rather have maybe some professional voice actors in there. That's just me. But I will say that, you know, I'm also biased because I did make a little scene for the show. They asked me uh, last year, they saw my tunes and stuff and they were like, and this is real. I, this is real. I did have a very small stint with HBO Max and they asked me to come in. They asked me to like write this scene and it was in the second episode that it aired and they didn't, you know, obviously I pulled my name from the show, but um, it's after the scene when Daphne kisses Velma. Oh yeah, they're gay, by the way. I wanted to have a scene after that where Velma comes back to Daphne's house. So I'm just gonna show it here since it's technically mine, so. Daphne, I'm gonna cut to the chase. I feel a panic attack coming on, baby, and uh, I think the only medicine is a taste of that stinky jinkies. You know what I'm saying, baby, come on. Wait, hold on, hold on, just hold, just, just wait, I mean. <laughs> That kiss earlier today, it, it's got me thinking all kinds of crazy things. Things I'm a bit nervous to say. <laughs> like, uh, like how I bet your bean is bigger than a Scooby snack. <laughs> you know, little beanie baby down there, huh? Bet it looks like a middle-aged man's thumb. Come on, give me a hand. Oops! Oh, man, I'm so clumsy. <laughs> like what you see? Bet you're wondering if I got an Arby's beef and cheddar between my legs, huh? Well, there's only one way to find out. I know that tongue's as flat as an old hound dog. Use the tools you got to solve this mystery for the both of us, huh? Wait, well, hold on, come on! You know, I don't need my glasses to see that... that you... and me... we're a great pair. So why don't you drop this attitude, and let me get a peek at Vernon Troyer's head down there. Come on, but but the panic attacks. Yeah, that's cool. I got mysteries to solve, anyways. But if I had to put money on it, I bet it's as bare as a silverback's belly. I'll find out, baby. Just you wait. Just you wait. And there it is. You know, I was really upset when they said that they weren't gonna use it. And I think creatively, I was just like, we're gonna have to split ways because this is just not gonna work. The only thing that can break Velma's cold heart is Asian Daphne's power of love. My sworn nemesis is actually somebody that I wanna bang. That's gonna stop my panic attacks. So I don't know, you know, in, in, in conclusion, I guess I just wanted to come and talk about the show because it's like, I don't know, man. Sometimes shows are just so, it's just subjective. Like if you like the show, like the show. Don't 
let the mob mentality totally skew things that you like. You could watch this and be like, I love the humor. That's fine. I just wanted to give you my opinion on it. The biggest thing is like, I'm very curious to see where it goes. I will be watching the rest of the season to see if it gets any better because they've already oh renewed God. it for a second season, which is insane after the backlash that they've gotten so far. Cause usually that shit happens. They will cut that shit quick. You know, I want to check in again after this season is over to see how it is, but you know, I can't even really recommend the show. I feel like a lot of the watches people are getting is just the curiosity of like, is it as bad as people say and people are just hate watching it? You know, it's just odd, but I just wanted to come in, I guess, give my two cents about it. I really wish there was a scene where Velma, I hope there's a scene where Velma uh, eats Daphne's pussy for sure. Wait, how old are they? I'm going to retract my statement of wanting Velma to eat Daphne's pussy on camera. Uh, so there it is. Velma season one, episode one and two. Uh, I give it a four out of 10. Um, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. I'll probably rewatch them again too. And it might be lower. I, four out of 10 is very generous. I'm mostly giving it a four out of 10 because the art, the art's very good. And the people who worked on that show should be very proud. And it's unfortunate whenever writers of shows fuck up this bad and they, uh, they fuck up, they fuck it all up. And then everybody says, oh, that show sucks and nobody can appreciate the small little things of even how the show probably took a, a year and a half to film and millions of dollars. It's a shame. So, you know, watch it or don't, I don't give a shit, goodbye.